watching Nord Tuning. This is a channel about rebuilding and modifying your Alpha engine. There is one thing I haven't tested on this cylinder head and those are the valve springs. Although I have used uh, 12 mm cans on stock engines in the past and got away with it, it doesn't seem like a good idea to do this on this freshly built engine. So, I've built a spring tester and pulled the springs from my old track day car engine to use as a reference. This is the spring tester I made. I bought a scale that was up to the job and made a fixture in my grill. These were the specs I found for my old track day car engine. The same springs are used in the twin spark engine and also in the later 2 liter Nord engine with the variable valve timing. Another set I tested were these springs and I assume these are the springs from a standard Nord engine. The springs I'm going to use are designed for 11.5 mm lift and 6,000 to 6,500 rpm. If you want to go beyond that, you better use the springs suggested or manufactured by your cam company. Like this set I have here, this is the BS42 springs from uh, Kent Cams. One thing to note here, if you are building a stock engine and you want to fit new springs, be sure you get springs from a well-known manufacturer and don't get the cheap Chinese springs because they will break within a thousand miles or so. So be wary of those springs. The second check we have to do on the valve springs is to see how far we are from coil bind. Uh, to measure this, I have made these bushes, 29 millimeters. It leaves you just enough room to fit the collets. And when you have fitted the springs with these bushes, you can see how much play there is before the valve retainer, spring retainer touches the bushes. And you can calculate the installed spring height. These were the numbers I found. I could push down the valves about 8 millimeters, and you, when you add the height of the bush, you get the installed height. Here I put down all the installed heights, and when you subtract the coil bind height, then you get the maximum lift. You should dial in a safety margin of 1.4 millimeters, so here we are good for a 12 mm lift. I've changed these valve strings, springs to get a more even uh, lift height. Another more crude way to uh, establish what kind of lift this head will uh, accommodate is to make a special tool like this. This is a stainless steel, three quarters tube, I welded a nut on it with a bolt and when you install it like this just turn it until it touches the valve stem and then see how much you can turn it before you get into coil bind. When you know the pitch of the thread you can calculate how much uh, you have to go down to get into coil bind. Uh, this is one and a half mil pitch, so every turn you, you do, it will push down the valve 
one and a half mil. So now you know how much the valves can be opened before you run into coil bind. Uh, take a safety margin of uh, 1.4 millimeters and now you know how much lift this head will accommodate. If you have tested the valve springs in a vise before and you know which height they have when they run into collar bind, you can calculate the installed height of, uh, of the valve springs. Now let's look at the oil seal in the front cover. There are several things I don't like about this seal. It isn't a tight fit in the chamber that's made for it. So every time it gets pressurized, it will move out and then later shrink again when the engine's off and this will cause it to leak, probably. And this one is even worse. So this is the situation we've got. Rubber O-rings are used a lot in hydraulic installations to seal off uh, the oil waste. Only never in combination with a paper gasket. The pressure of the O-ring is uh, not very high, so the oil can get behind the gasket and seep out. It's better to cut away part of the gasket so the O-ring can seal properly against the metal of the block. So this is the O-ring I bought for it. It's a 12 millimeter uh, O-ring and three millimeters thick. It is made of Phyton. It's a brand name of uh, Dupont. I think the English name is a uh, fluorine rubber. It's a little bit tougher than your standard O-ring. And it has a nice tight fit in the front cover. And it sticks out a little bit to make a nice seal. So now it will have a better chance of making a nice tight oil seal. I also bought a baffle plate for this engine. I fitted this baffle plate uh, with some adhesive between the plate and the engine block. So it also provides some rigidity to the engine block. And I bought some new nuts to torque it down to the bearing caps. Between the sump and the baffle plate I used the standard gasket. Maybe it's better to use an adhesive here also. So the sump can give some extra rigidity to the engine block but I chose to use a normal gasket so the disassembly of the sump would be a lot easier. Well, brilliant, but I didn't see that. There isn't a hole in the gasket. Bollocks. Now some footage of the selection of the oil pump. There is one oil pump that has a higher capacity than all the others. The first one and the gear is just a little bit longer. These are the numbers on the pump. To test the oil pumps, I made a test rig. Here you see the flow meter. The 
this is a pressure gauge and a valve so you can add a restriction and the pressure will go up. The first thing you see is that there is a lot of oil leaking down the drive, drive shaft of the pump. And another thing I've noticed is that the pressure relief valve is leaking oil. The oil leaking out on top of the oil pump is intentional. Here you can see the groove from the pressure canal to the top of the oil pump. It's probably there to uh, lubricate the gear of the oil pump and the chain to drive the cams. Now let's look at the seat of the pressure relief valve. This is one that wasn't leaking and this is the offending one. You can see that the holes aren't bored concentrically and on one side there isn't a seat to seal against. Luckily we have a way to rectify this. The pump housing is made of aluminium so it's uh, nice and soft. You just place the pressure relief valve in the housing, tap down on it. This will create a burr in the aluminium and it will create its own seat to seal against. Here you can see the seat we have created. It's a nice gray color and all the way around. Here you can see the test, three and a half bar and no more oil leaks. Another thing I noticed was that there was some small air bubbles in the oil. The oil got aerated. Well, this can be good. You don't want any air in the oil supplied to the bearing. But where does it come from? When we look at the design of the oil pump, here we have the pressure relief valve. It's placed in this chamber and when it opens the oil can get back to the suction side of the pump. The only drawback is that here is suction on this channel so if the pressure relief valve is shut air can seep past this pressure relief valve and go all the way down into the pump. So the pump has the ability to suck a little air past the pressure relief valve. To rectify this I have uh, blocked this channel and made a relief hole here. So now the oil, the excess oil can get out and go directly to the sump and the pump isn't able to suck any air. So, no more air bubbles. And now you can clearly see when the pressure relief valve opens. You just can see the hole I made in the side of the oil pump. Another thing I like to do is to reduce the diameter of the front washer behind 
the front oil ring and then you can leave out the gear that drives the oil pump so now you can prime the engine when you completed the engine and when the oil pressure is uh, up and everything is filled with oil then you can install the gear install the washer make sure your distributor is in the right place you can adjust it like so and when it's in the correct place you can install the oil seal so finally the engine's in it is uh, running on a mega squirt injection system so we can do some data logging and see what the power of this uh, engine is uh, now it's uh, in stock the only difference is that it has uh, motronic pistons and all the other systems are uh, are stock so uh, we can do some modifications and see if we can improve the performance of this engine see you on the next video